welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a factory in case your tank or car suddenly catches fire and you end up totaling it you know you need another one of those vehicles and where does that come from a factory so might as well build one in case you need a reason to why you have so many cars on your roads however before I begin remember please like and subscribe and without further ado onto the tutorial. So, for our pallet, we're going to be using a very large variety of blocks. For our walls, we're going to be using terracotta, bricks, and both versions of granite. Then, for our basic structural stuff, we'll be using polished andesite, polished blackstone, and light blue terracotta. For our smokestacks, we're going to be using light gray and gray concrete. Just as accents, we'll be using copper in its various stages. That can replace light blue terracotta. I might do it, who knows. Then, for the normal factory floors, we'll be using andesite, gravel, and polished andesite. For some of our basic stuff on the non-factory parts, we'll be using jungle wood for the floors and spruce for the furniture although dark oak does work as well. Then, find yourself a very wide flat area. You might need to flatten out some of the terrain and fill in some holes because factories are very large. Once your area is ready, start by making some basic outlines on the ground. And we need three separate areas. One for the offices and, you know, managerial room break rooms, all that. Then we have the actual factory part, which will have smokestacks coming out of it. And then we need a delivery bay, where we have some trucks parked. Although the trucks themselves are optional, we still need the actual bay, which means you need three separate areas. Of course, just make some rectangles on the ground, and then you'll be good. Now, we got ourselves a nice little area where we can see I've divided it into two segments out of the three that I said. And that's because, you know, when you have a giant building like this, it takes up a lot of room. So might as well stack some of the things on top of each other to save on space. Therefore, this long part right here, will have a first floor as just storage, while the second floor will be the office building. Then, you want to make some standardizations for the measurements which means maybe stack up like seven blocks or so, and that will be your room height. Our fours are going to be two blocks thick, keep that in mind, and the actual factory part will be two stories tall. The storage thing can be anywhere up to three stories because tall racks, which means you have a little bit of measuring to do. Once you're ready with that, start by lining the entire place with bricks. But only do that if you're in creative, because survival, we have to do quite a different thing in order to make it more efficient. We have two giant boxes here, and they really just look like I used slash fill several times. It looks like, you know, this isn't going to become anything. However, we can turn this into a factory from here, with a lot of steps in between. First off, this area is going to be storage. And I sliced the second floor in half, so that way we have a bit more room for, you know, storage. For the flooring here, we want to be using a combination of andesite and gravel, along with whole chunks of polished andesite, to give the impression that it once had all polished andesite flooring, but over time, factory accidents and overall just the weathering of the tiles has created a nice weathered effect. Do this for both rooms, which should be connected. Then, for the upper floors, the jungle planks will do the trick, and make sure there's a staircase to get up to the third floor at some point. Now, we have some nice factory flooring right here. It's all gravel, but occasionally we have blobs of andesite, and a checkerboard pattern of polished andesite from time to time. You know, as if the flooring was originally a checkerboard pattern of just normal andesite and polished andesite. Unfortunately, most has been crushed into gravel. Now, 
for our extended factory part, we want to find the middle, which fortunately I've marked with a door over there. It's two blocks. Usually that's a bad idea, but fortunately we're on a large enough build that it doesn't really matter. And we want to go maybe three blocks out on both sides, like this. And then we can make a slant downward. And when you slant downward, we can cut this all off to make a more interesting shape. Although that's too extreme, still, by decreasing the size by increasing the middle, and then slicing it off from there, we can have a much more interesting roof design. Once you have your triangles cut out of it, you can start making a more unique roof design, like I have here. I'm still working on it, and you can see it's a little complex. And I recommend making your own unique design. If you're copying me, I mean, you aren't really going to learn much. In case you ever need to build another factory, you're just going to be starting from square one again. Which I don't want you guys doing, so try making your own designs. I recommend dividing this section into five sections. And if you can't fit that, then... Well, make adjustments as needed. You don't have to do five, and if you end up with a prime number, and you know, you can't do anything about that, then just make one of the segments in the middle smaller. With the new roof design, I was able to turn the original roof, which would have been a triangle, into some glass panels, and we can see it's looking really good. Accented with some oxidized copper, and it's starting to look a lot like a real factory on the exterior. And, well, it's really good looking. But, of course, we're still missing some of the smaller nuances, such as windows, landscape, all of that. Start by adding some azalea leaves, alternating between normal and flowering, although it should be more random and not just checkerboard pattern. Then. You might also want to convert the area in front of this into a parking lot, which means the ground becomes black concrete, some more white concrete things to be parking dividers, maybe build some cars here, but make sure that there's one area on the side where it protrudes for a truck, because of course, what about material transport? Make sure that we have all the logistics to make sure that this would be a real functioning factory. Just to address something that I said earlier, when I said make the walls later on in survival, I realized that's a little unintuitive with the order I'm doing these, so in case you are following my orders to a T, for one, I make mistakes. Take my instructions with a grain of salt, and two, build in the walls now. We'll texture them later, but otherwise, just make sure you have a parking lot, and if you need any cars in it. I have not made a tutorial exactly on how to do cars, so I'd recommend just looking one up. However, if you do want to see a model example, I have built quite a few of them in a gas station tutorial, so you can use these as reference. I will be copy pasting these in for the sake of convenience. want to do from here is we want to make a door next to our little garage where we'll have a truck parked. That part's optional. I'm not going to build a truck here. But either way, we want a door, normal door, polished andesite, you know the draw. Then we want to have accents going all across the building. From the floor layer, so where the jungle planks are, we want to line the entire building with some copper. I'm going to place a placeholder block for there, and there's nothing really to it. We just do that, and we connect it using the same design we have from over here, where, well, we just connect them with stairs and blocks. Once you reach the part over here, you can simply connect them up, and it's actually not too difficult to do that because you can just replace stairs with full blocks and now your problem is basically solved. Just go through it like this and then divide it up into eight or nine segments. Any number is fine, but remember to make it have, you know, a decent number. 
I've now successfully divided all the segments. And uh, this took way too long. This took like three hours to do. But you may have noticed, I've now changed the copper to be going through different levels depending on how far it is from a pillar. You know, adds a little bit of detail. And then, for the actual divider parts, we can see it's just a simple design from down here, except I rounded the corners where it connects up. And then at the top, I made it protrude by a block to give it that final look. And we can see it's working really well. Then, from here, we want to start working on the interior, which I have not done any lighting for. If you want to do lighting, well, I mean, you kind of have to. I'd recommend using yellow frog lights, although lanterns work too, considering the time period. So, just place down some lanterns. Make sure all the doors are looking good. For these things inside the factory itself, just make a gradient of copper. And otherwise, we can get down to business. Some basic lighting has been added to the inside. Nothing to write home about. And the factory part, if you used windows on top, does not need lighting, because at nighttime, nobody would be here, and it adds to an ominous aura of exploring a factory at night. Then, for our final touch of exterior lighting, we're going to be using some windows. And, well, it's literally more stairs and blocks. Make a trim of polished andesite on the first floor, which means the entire row of blocks on the bottom, or you could use polished granite. And then, from there, you want to make some windows. Very simple stuff, because you really only have to place a couple of blocks here and there, like this. You could just place blocks, I'm doing so very messily, but look, just like that. Add some stairs on the corners, if it wants to align. Punch out the hole here, and then add it maybe every other place or so, and then it'll start looking good. From here, you can tell that, well, we have quite a few windows now. And it really improves the build. Makes it less flat and repetitive. And although I did it in a grid pattern, still, it makes a nice design. On the inside, we now need to actually work on the interior, our final parts of the build. Of course, have inverted windows, which means building them identical on both sides. And then, we need storage in this area. For storage, I've fortunately already done one of those before, so, which means if I just teleport myself here, we have some very basic storage racks. These can be gasoline. This, of course, is supposed to be tank shells from my military base video, but still. But the most important part is crates. We can see oak with spruce on top, I'd recommend jungle with spruce on top, and when you have a bunch of those stacked up together, you can make a pretty neat effect. Although this is a very basic storage room, if you stack all these up, you can make a pretty interesting design. So depending on what kind of factory you're building, and I've gotten a couple of suggestions for tank building, then get some iron ore and some blackstone for the treads, if you're following the design of this tank right here. With some basic storage in here, we got some raw ores, then we got what could be assumed to be paint buckets, some unused tank treads, and some gasoline canisters. Now, going into our main area, one I copy-pasted in a tank, you know, convenience. And what you want to do is, depending on what kind of thing you're trying to produce, you want to accommodate the build, which means I can't cover every single thing, which means I'm just going to be focusing on tanks slash vehicles. First off, you need a large furnace or two, and you should place them under your largest panels, because we're going to have smokestacks coming out of them. It's pretty simple, you just kind of build a cube, on one side you open it up, netherrack, fire, and then the smokestacks, you just build cylinders that get smaller and smaller before having some campfires at the top, tipped with some grey concrete. I know that's a little complicated, but still, I will show you guys how to do that. 
then any other steps you need to do, accommodate your build for those. Now we have some smokestacks coming out of the place. We can see it's a cylinder and then it thins out and then it widens again before ending with some campfires over hay bales, which makes them go double high. With the pollution added to our factory, making sure that we can remove snow forever. Now we just fill in the insides with whatever you think fits the build. I did not do much because starting to run out of time for this video and I'm trying to not delay another video for yeah a lot I've been delaying a lot recently you know typical youtuber things but regardless the final thing we need to do is the second and third floors the third floor needs lanterns and will be our break room we'll have some file cabinets filled with all the OSHA violations because everybody knows those are amazing and you know managerial desk, everything you know a normal workplace would have, including a small medical bay. So, small spiral staircase goes up, this floor is just kind of empty, maybe a couple tables or so for lunch, and then whatever creature comforts you need on the third floor. The third floor is now done. We have some tables to sit around at, books, some check-in stations, then we have the main office, you know, OSHA violations here, tax fraud here, you know, all of the fun things that I commit on a regular basis. Big chair, little chair, you know, assert dominance over the employee, all the great things. So, from here, you want to do one final thing, and I feel like I've been saying that a lot, but this is the true final thing. We want to texture the walls. From this... You place down some terracotta, or place a couple blocks here and there, and add some granite too. You might even want to add some of the polished granite variation. When you add this enough, it breaks down the monotony of, you know, bricks and bricks and more bricks, and turns it into a more unique shade. Although it does take quite a bit of time, it really shows some expertise in your builds, rather than just following a tutorial to a T. Now, we have some nice wall texturing, and we can see how much this does for the build. It's kind of like a watercolor painting. The little water droplets themselves don't usually do much, but given it enough, it really makes the painting look good. And honestly, that's what granite and terracotta do for this build. You can see that the walls are more than just bricks, they're actually something. You know, you could even tell a story by making them into cracks but I'm getting ahead of myself. So, everything except the ceiling, but that will be fixed very shortly, have been done, and that means this build is finished. Although it's very not beginner friendly, if you're looking for a challenge, I'd recommend it. Although, you do need an extensive amount of resources. This is not for those who are just starting out. This is for people who already have like villager trading halls and elytras mending on everything but if you are at that stage of the game try your hand at it a little tough but still you might end up with a really nice build and with that it's the end of today's video if you enjoyed this video remember please like and subscribe it really helps me out even if you don't try out this build still i hope you enjoyed and enjoy the rest of your day gearsaw out <laughs>